So is it is it my turn now? It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for it the entire day. So now it now it's my turn. No, wonderful. So thanks. Uh, first of all, thank thanks our friend French friends and uh, organizers here uh, for this. Uh, I think it's a very good meeting and it's also the virtual platform works pretty well. And uh, I get the, a little bit the nice uh, spirit, even through my computer. I uh, hope uh, that we can meet in Nice in reality, maybe in one year. So um, this is now all about the clinical trials. And um, I think we start with uh, Pierre, who will introduce the French GFM clinical trials in MDS. Okay, th thank you, Uwe. Good afternoon. Do you see my slides? Yes, wonderful. Okay, okay. So, just I mean, uh, uh, of course, I'll show some GFM trials. Some are uh, are in common with those of other groups. Other are small ones, just done uh, uh, at the GFM level. So, the, the the main issue is, of course, the the, the first line uh, uh, in in uh, in uh, high risk MDS, and this is led by by Lionel. We all hoped uh, in last summer that the uh, uh, Pevonidostar would prove uh, would prove a good companion to azacitidine, and that would would be able to build on that, uh, especially if Pevonidostar had the advantage of being non myelosuppressive. So that allowed in particular particular the addition of venetoclax, potentially others. And as you know, the results are mainly negative, although, I mean, that there could be some subsets of patients benefiting from, from this drug. But, but so, so we, we are a bit lost here because all companies are, are uh, registering their drug uh, in, in association with azacitidine. So we have, apart from azacitidine, we have no other reference treatment. Uh, on which we could build and and perform academic trials. So, for the moment, I, 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 I'm afraid we're a bit stuck, but this can be discussed, of course. Now, uh, intensive chemotherapy has been used. This was CPX uh, 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 351 by Pierre Peternin in both in first line and in relapsing patients. So, in first line, he treated 30 patients, uh, 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 and he would present that at ASH. Most of them had normal or non-complex carry type. And once again, I'm not supposed to show the results, but results were quite good. And only three, uh, three patients out of 30, and they all had an excess blast initially, uh, uh, were unable to clear their excess blast. And 26 patients could be uh, um, um, bridge to transplant. So it certainly is interesting in patients uh, who have no uh, complex carry type. And as usual, as compared to three plus seven, the, 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 the TPX was better tolerated, less mucositis, etc. Although uh, myelosuppression was at least as prolonged as with three plus seven. Okay, now second line or beyond, and uh, well, this has been presented, the ideal and idiom study by, by Lionel and by Marie, uh, and we also have uh, for, for second line treatment uh, 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 two uh, 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 approaches. One is the BST003, which, in, which is an RSC prodrug, uh, and the trial is chaired by Marianne Hospital. It's largely in AML, but also possible in MDS. It's, it's a kind of pro, it, it, in brief, it allows to have high dose RSC at the toxicity of conventional dose RSC, I would say, schematically. So this has just started. And CPX351 uh, uh, by, by Pierre Peternin, what we found was that the three-day regimen was perhaps somewhat too toxic. So we have this two-day uh, regimen with CPX. Uh, only a few patients have been uh, uh, included, but two of the four that were included uh, uh, at this level uh, were bridged to transplant. So it's it's preliminary and and uh, well, uh, it will have to be confirmed uh, con compared to other second line treatments. We don't have so many so far. Now. Allo stem cell transplantation. There are quite a few approaches there, and, and Marie Robin will will detail a few of them. First. She will present at ASH this uh, trial, uh, which uh, was started, I would say, before uh, uh, there was a large access to hyplo identical transplant, and where uh, uh, we took lower, lower risk patients who had some 
risk factors like being a, a revised IPSS, at least intermediate, or having severe cytopenias, or resistant to several lines of treatment, and then uh, compare those with a donor or without a donor. And she will present the results. Of course, at the end, most patients had a donor, so the no donor patient uh, uh, cohort is smaller. But what she found was that uh, it, it, the, 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 the transplant related mortality is still in, in this patient population about 15 to 20 percent. The reason being that most patients, of course, are older than 60. So it's a big, I mean, this, this issue of transplanting lower risk MDS is, is a major problem. And, and I, I, yeah, I, and that could be a, we'll probably need further discussions in our groups uh, in those patients, because once again, largely based on their age. Now, uh, uh, so now what treatment before allowed stem cell transplantation now in high risk MDS? The issue is whether CPX, we've seen it, ASA plus venetoclax being used by many groups because it leads to rapid reduction in, in the last count, no treatment. And, and so this is being discussed. And it's not all, it's very difficult to randomize in this situation. What uh, uh, Marie Robin is, is now pioneering is, is a pilot study of, of trying to have no treatment prior to, to allo transplant and take patients with myeloblasts up to more or less 10 15 percent and no rapid progression and try to transplant them within six weeks which in practice means largely a sibling or haplodona uh, uh, in this situation she will probably say a little more uh, uh, about it uh, and she uh, is also uh, chairing uh, um, uh, um, a study uh, in patients who are at a very high risk of relapse post transplant because they have either uh, a, a very poor carrier type according to revised IPSS or TP53 mu gene mutation, and that would generally be, of course, by allelic uh, mutation. And this is the use of uh, Aztec 727, uh, started early, uh, stop, stopping immunosuppression and DLI. So it's, it's a pre prophylactic treatment uh, post-transplant in, in high-risk patients. This has started not long ago, and a few patients have been included. And another one now in relapsing patients, relapsing post-transplant is, is a combination of ASA and venetoclax initially at lower dose and, and DLI. This is chaired by, by Thomas Clouseau and, and, and Marie Robin. Okay, CMML, as said before, we were disappointed by the results obtained with decitabine alone. We have no uh, access to decitabine in most EU countries, I guess. So the idea was to try to restart with azacitidine and combine it with new drugs. And one is venetoclax, the other is magrolimab. So those would be relatively small phase two trials uh, uh, chaired by Rafael, uh, uh, the Avenir trial and the uh, monomagro trial and not Tyrol, uh, sorry. Uh, so, okay, this will be uh, submitted soon in order to try to to, to do better than an HMA alone. Now, MDS with TP53 mutation, this is chaired by Thomas Clouseau. We, as you know, we apparently, there were apparently favorable results with the addition of APR246 in phase two trial, but in a phase three trial, uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, the drug added nothing to azacitidine alone. So it's the second disappointment of the, uh, of the summer. Uh, and so, uh, Potentially, various drugs can be can be tested. For example, ATO. There are some in vitro studies suggesting that the drug could be could be interesting. Uh, so it could be tested, uh, 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 and uh, and uh, uh, um, of course we need an oral form there is which is not obvious. There could be also magrolimab, but this is this is going to be a, a, a company sponsored trial. So all ideas here are, are welcome potentially based on in vitro work uh, in these, of course, we know very hard to treat uh, a subgroup of patients. Now, first line, uh, lower risk MDS, uh, uh, Sophie Bark is conducting a trial of early versus late onset of, of EPO based on prior uh, work suggesting that uh, early onset of a EPO was associated with later uh, um, a later uh, red blood cell transfusion dependence, and also based on the fact that patients with fewer mutations respond better. So this is ongoing. Uh, uh, um, and uh, okay, now second line or below in low risk MDS, 
uh, Sophie Park also has a, a, a trial with low risk, low dose deferocyrox. We know that deferocyrox in some patients, 20% or so, can improve cytopenias for reasons that are not clear. And Sophie in, in, vitro, uh, in vitro has shown that low dose deferocyrox could, could lead to, to improvement of hemopoiesis and is trying to to show this in, in, in a clinical trial, and indeed with some interesting preliminary results. Uh, and Lionel has now presented the Combola uh, trial in non-cerebrastic lower risk MDS. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, finally, the, uh, the combination with uh, 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 MDS associated with autoimmune or in autoinflammatory diseases. They, it can be CMMR, it's generally low risk patients. So, uh, uh, Arsène Mequignon will present at ASH the results of azacitidine in MDS with autoimmune disorders resistant or dependent on steroids uh, uh, after a, um, a retrospective study suggesting that about 80% of the patients responded. Uh, interesting responses are seen also in this prospective study where most patients really had low risk MDS. And, and by the way, we, we, were, uh, uh, we, we had to exclude in this trial many patients who had very mild MDS and who could not be considered uh, for, for uh, candidates for azacitidine based on their, on their MDS. But I know some of them were treated out of the protocol with very good responses on the, on the uh, uh, autoimmune component. And we know the, the work performed, uh, uh, especially by, by our, our group, this biologic part is led by, by Lionel, showing that those patients often, often had, have TED2 or IDH mutation. So it's, it's really an interesting uh, 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 category. And finally, patients with UBA1 mutation, the VEXA syndrome, uh, some patients may respond to azacitidine, but also retrospective uh, analysis suggests that roxolitinib can be interesting uh, in, in those patients. Uh, so we're going to set up a, a prospective study with roxolitinib. It, it's a small one uh, 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 of about 15 pa uh, uh, patients. So uh, just, I mean, so there are many ongoing studies, many are small, uh, many are open to, to, to cooperation. I'd like to, for, of course, uh, uh, acknowledge the, the group of, of uh, the, the GFM, uh, of course, the, 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 the investigators, the centers, the, 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 the biostatistician, and of course, uh, Fatia's team, uh, uh, who is doing hard work uh, and, of course, cooperating with our colleagues present here today. So thank you. Yeah, Pierre. Thank you very much. I have tachycardia uh, because of the number of <laughs> clinical trials. I'm always so impressed how you do that uh, in France. I mean, it's, it's, it's really excellent work and also the diversity. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any questions in the, in the, in the chat. In the chat. Um, so you just mentioned the um, the P53 um, question and also the high risk, um, I think where we can also say that um, you, you in, in, in France made a proposal um, for a European trial with Pevonetistat and unfortunately the, the agent now, uh, I mean, with combination with Venetoclax and now the agent basically uh, disappeared uh, because of uh, the negative results from the phase, phase three trial. But are we, just to be provocative, are we, uh, as, a, as an academic group, are we still competitive enough um, also with regards to the um, competing trials by, by pharmaceutical industry, which, which of course um, will um, sponsor their own trials um, 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 from, a, from a phase two to, to a phase three level. So what, how, how can we become competitive enough also to get access to these novel agents also in the high risk segment? Well, I mean, that was also in the perspectives, but we can address it now. I, I think had the PEVO uh, trial been positive, it, we would really have had a place here. And I, I think the same will happen. Just say, if, for example, the ASA plus VEN trial is positive. We may rapidly go and, and suggest addition of a, a new drug, uh, which, which the uh, uh, industry will not do. I mean, they're not interested. They're interested in registering their drug. And, uh, and so I'm not sure they, they would embark rapidly on, a, on, a, on, on the triplet versus a doublet. Uh, uh, 
because that takes time for them. So, I mean, our, our approach was, I think, very, uh, very feasible and, and could have been uh, started rapidly. But of course, I mean, that started from, and we, we had ground, and, and Lionel may, may respond better than me because he's worked a lot on the subject. He had a lot of ground to say that uh, the phase three trial would be positive. And, and we tried to, to be ahead of, uh, of this slow, I mean, often slow uh, 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 industry bureaucracy. But, well, uh, but I, 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 my guess is that as soon as we have a, a good doublet, then we, we may go faster than industry and propose a triplet versus a doublet. I'm sorry, I may, may ask now questions, uh, Pierre, which are supposed to become questions later on, but I think they may be addressed here already because you you giving giving this uh, the speak. If um, I may add one oh, word to what Pierre Valeria. said. Yes, uh, to this point and to your question, Uwe, I think that AMSCO and Europe can really increase the quality of clinical studies because we are not linked or uh, limited by the necessity of companies that do have to promote a certain drug. And uh, we are looking for different uh, goals. So I think that the design of the study that sometimes is not really clear when you have a sponsor trial can be in fact uh, much more independent and uh, I would say freely designed by, by us. It, it still remains the problem of being um, sponsored and being granted with the enough budget, but yeah. I, I don't, hmm, sorry, yeah, you know, go ahead, no, please. And I, I, I think especially when we are thinking of combining three different drugs, sometimes it's easier for a pharmaceutical company to go to academic center that might have a contract with different companies uh, to conduct this, this kind of study rather than doing them, them, them themselves. So I think we still have a chance to have good clinical trial, even randomized trial, of course, phase two, I think uh, uh, phase three will be conducted by, by, by the industry for sure, because they led to approval, but for randomized phase two trial with triplet or doublet or comparing the two, there might be quite good chances that all group uh, together might might get this, uh, this kind of trial. The, the, the major problem is that we don't have any new, very exciting drug that uh, might be uh, involved in an academic phase two randomized trial. Yeah. I, yeah I but pro no, go ahead. Probably we, we also need to think about other scenarios and probably patients not including in the classical clinical trials with secondary um, NDS or something similar subgroups are going to be are, are, can be targeted in this uh, platform because otherwise it's very difficult for us to do a better a, a great study without uh, sponsored uh, drugs. Yeah, but I think there's a very good discussion. Um, um, and I just want to say maybe one thing. Number one, we will not have a break after this session. So we just uh, uh, I just uh, discussed with Sylvie that we continue because we have a lot of participants at the moment. And so we will not have a break. It's just for everybody to know that uh, if you want a break, do your break now or later. Uh, and the second thing, I want to be a little bit provocative, but also constructive here with a new European uh, regulation on clinical trials and the new database and so on, uh, it will be harder for us as an academic um, um, academic groups to perform clinical trials. Harder in a sense that we will have to fulfill this, at least I, I can speak for Germany here, maybe also for, for other countries, uh, we will fulfill the same regulatory um, um, rules and uh, and laws. Uh, I mean, we, we we did in the past as well, but it was a little bit more. There was, I think, we had some um, some academic uh, benefit. I think sometimes also at ethics committees. But now in, in the future, this will not be the case. We have we will have to pay the same fees. There will be uh, the same uh, audit plan and so on. And I think the way we do clinical trials at the moment 
on a national level may persist and may maybe maintained on an international level. I think if we really want to continue like we did, and I think it's at the moment it's getting it's getting really in, uh, connected, we should consider to pro professionalize uh, this process and maybe work with a professional agency, CRO or whatever, in a single point of contact way and to um, to, to uh, professionalize the um, uh, sponsorship, um, contracting, and so on, to have a single point of contact for all our European trials. It, I'm not speaking about that this has to be in Germany. I don't care about this. I, it, it just needs to be an, 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 um, um, yeah, um, a legal entity where we have a contract with, with the groups saying a long-term relationship, five years, Uh, for instance, and um, where where also we have, let's say, a single point of contact with not exchangeable people, people we we know, people we trust, uh, and uh, people who can really deal with this bureaucracy, because it's not no longer possible for a single person or with uh, also for, uh, having Silke here in the EMSCO team, we need actually 10 Silkes in the future to really do that. Uh, so I'm not negative, I'm constructive, but I would like to Uh, um, yeah, to a to little bit um, 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 challenge you and uh, get your insights, whether you are interested to work on such a structure. Uh, and of course, this will take a long time, but maybe we should really consider along those ways. Guillermo Sanz actually made a comment. Um, fu he fully agrees it would be easier to perform large clinical trials if we work as a unique international European stable group. Yes. And I think every group, I mean, Spanish group will, will do it and Fr French group and Italian, we will do our own clinical trials. That's for sure. But if we really want to approach the complex European Union bureaucracy, U European Union regula uh, regulation, it would be great to have one platform, one platform which can also um, send monitoring people to each country, which is, it, it, will be, it will be expensive. I totally agree. But honestly, the companies, if they want to work with us and if they want us to be involved, they have to, uh, uh, they have to um, fulfill the criteria and they will have to support this kind of entity because otherwise it will not work. Yeah, but uh, you know how much money it's involved in a CRO and in the organization. So we have to really get organized and find uh, a way to be supported in this. You know, in Italy, it's a nightmare because we, like in Germany, we have several ethical committees, not one central, but every single region or hospital even have a different one with different idea, different requests. So it's really a nightmare. And, uh, and uh, it depends. In, in France, I think it's a little bit different. And uh, they have a, an established, uh, let's say, um, administrative group. For us, it has become really a nightmare. And that's why we have been so late in many trials, which is really hampering our participation. And I'm really quite uh, depressed about it. So no, I you, completely you... agree. No, you know, we are a centralized country. It's a sequelae of Napoleon. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we have the, the opposite. We and, we have have, been... and, and we have Bismarck. <laughs> you have rejected Napoleon. <laughs> no, no but, but actually France is also in the European Union, Pierre. You shouldn't, for, you shouldn't forget that. And also, <laughs> also you will actually have... No, I was just saying we have only one ethics committee for yeah. the whole country. That, that, that's okay. simplify, uh, that's, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yes, yes but, exactly. But, but, but to submit a proposal in the new European Union um, uh, database, you can't do this with... Uh, I mean, you, you can do it. Of course, everybody can do whatever he or she wants, but it will be time consuming. It will be a, a huge amount of bureaucracy. And uh, also, if, if we consider this on a European level, I foresee a lot of challenges. So again, maybe we can, we, 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 I mean, this is a conversation we have here now in front of everybody. Maybe if you agree, we, we will have a 
we could have a little uh, a meeting uh, um, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks or months where we also could involve ethics committees or some people uh, who are really involved into that and then give us some advice how we should proceed with this kind. And maybe we develop in the next two years such a, such a structure. Uh, I think this could foster our uh, collaborations. Uh, do, do you remember for, for Kumbola, uh, right from the beginning, uh, we wanted to have a CRO involved? Uh, just to avoid uh, exactly what you said, that it will become a nightmare on, on, on the registration of the trial and, and so on. And do you remember the cost? It was several millions. I don't remember if it was five or six or whatever, or zillion, I don't remember, but uh, all those uh, uh, organizations are very, very costly. So I concur with everything what you said. Uh, you're fully right. Well, I give you. I give you a response uh, uh, to that. A, um, a, a trial like the medalist trial. It's a. It's a registration trial, of course. Costs a company one million euro per patient. Okay, fully with including everything, with including uh, uh, the um, uh, the submission and so on. So this and and we have to put into relationship that we do IITs with a per patient cost of 10,000 euro. Let's say we did 10, it, 000, yes, but... let's say 10 to 20,000. And we produce sometimes data, even in a randomized fashion, which are valid for reimbursement of, of, of agents. And sometimes even, I mean, look, about, look at, at the APL trial, it's not MDS, of course, <laughs> but uh, even led to FDA and EMA approval. And that, and I, and I think we have to put this into the context of what we have to do now, nowadays, to submit a proposal, uh, submit a, a clinical trial, do the, uh, the monitoring, get audits, get, I, I mean, a, a colleague of mine almost went to jail uh, here in, in, in Germany because it got a really bad audit at the, with, the, with the bee farm. Uh, and they treat us the same way like they treat pharmaceutical companies. And uh, this is, uh, we are not, uh, we are not Jesus uh, here in this, in this play. We are normal uh, uh, people and um, also with the liability, uh, which actually is, is dangerous. So I'm not, again, I'm not depressive and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm positive, but I, I also see the challenges and I think we should think about that. Um, so I'm sorry that I brought up this discussion here, um, but Pierre actually uh, forced it a little bit um, because you do so many clinical trials in France and I was really impressed. So is it okay that if we, if we continue now? I mean, I'm the moderator, so I could-, I could You're the chair. <laughs> okay, so I could. Actually also, uh, Guillermo, uh, so Katharina Götze also agrees completely. I just read the chat and also Guillermo Sanz in Spain um, um, also uh, central ethics committee for approval, but any ethic committee at a particular center may ask specific question to be considered before approval. Exactly. So this, I mean, th we will not change this nightmare, but we may change our structure to deal with this nightmare. And that's what I suggest. I'm suggesting a professional structure with people, 10 people, reliable people we know, uh, not exchangeable, not looking for the next CRO for the next trial. One CRO we work with in a, uh, let's say, in a very uh, specific fashion. But again, this is something for future discussion. Okay, so if if you allow me, I will now continue and give a little um, a little um, view on the clinical trials performed in Germany. I will actually put my hand down, but I can't. Okay, it's not important. Good, so this is the German MDS uh, lower risk uh, trial um, platform at the moment. Um, I will, um, the Sintra is of course a trial we, we were participating, led by the Spanish group. The Europe trial I just uh, discussed. Uh, the IDEA trial is a group, is a, is a trial uh, we are participating in, in the AMSCO network. A Bohem is a prospective um, bone and hematopoiesis observational study I will not discuss. And later on, I will discuss all these four trials, uh, which we are about to uh, start uh, pretty soon. Um, uh, they have uh, fancy names, and uh, I will discuss them in a, in a second. They are all addressing anemia in lower risk MDS. Um, and this is higher risk platform. Um, again, MRD is the ASA plus Pevonetistat trial, which, however, 
is about to close because the program will be shut down. Then we have the IDH uh, um, a mutation at the, for the IDH2, uh, it's the ideal trial. And then Guido Koppe in Düsseldorf is running a trial with IDH uh, uh, inhibition and acetinib as a maintenance treatment of uh, high-risk MDS and AML after allergenic stem cell transplantation. It's a phase two trial. Um, and also uh, can uh, and acetinib can also be given not only as a maintenance, but also to treat relapse. Um, then we have uh, the HMA failure. Uh, we did together the Bergamo trial I presented. We did together, uh, and I said together uh, within uh, the European MSCO network, the SAMBA trial, which is already published. I will uh, actually uh, introduce the IMPRESS trial, it's, which is work in progress in a couple of seconds. Then the transplant trial uh, is... Um, a randomized study in high-risk MDS patients. Uh, Vuxios is randomized to conventional care regimen, is, which is either induction chemo or uh, azacitidine treatment. Um, so this is uh, uh, to introduce Vuxios here as a preparative regimen prior to transplantation, and Dakota was for the CMML patients. So this is just uh, to show that in low-risk MDS, we have a couple of trials which are, however, not, not overlapping. Uh, low risk, uh, uh, either ESA naive or ESA relapse refractory, and non transfusion dependent or transfusion dependent. And again, the names uh, are here, but I will show you a little bit about uh, what, are the, what are the trials about. So the first trial is the Lucas uh, trial, which um, um, is um, um, actually taking advantage of the agent CA4948. It's an IREC4 inhibitor where the data on AML, relapse refractory AML, have been presented at the last EHA meeting. Um, the, uh, the rationale, I will not um, uh, discuss a lot about it, but uh, the, uh, the idea here with you exploring this inhibitor in lower risk MDS is to target inflammation, uh, which may be mediate um, also ineffective hematopoiesis in a, a large subset of uh, lower risk MDS patients. It's a monotherapy, it's oral, it's continuous application. It's, uh, as you can see here, primary endpoint will be um, HIE um, uh, according to um, the, the IWGE and we, and we will have two cohorts, one ESA refractory and one ESA naive patients. Um, and the study is actually approved by uh, ethics and uh, bee farm and hope to start soon. The CANFIRE trial is a more uh, early exploratory pilot trial to go also for an anti-inflammatory approach with kanakinumab in uh, patients um, with IPSSR, um, very low, low intermediate and non-transfusion dependent anemia. And uh, kanakinumab, I think you know also from the Kentos trial, um, um, the uh, uh, agent is an anti-interleukin one beta monoclonal antibody. It's uh, given uh, as a, a subcutaneous uh, administration for a duration of uh, six months and 41 patients are about to be recruited at six sites in Germany, hopefully. Um, yeah, this is just the, the, the figure showing the the way it is uh, approached. Then the LUSPUS trial, uh, Katharina Götze is the PI of this uh, study, um, um, I think uh, has been already um, announced, but just um, the rationale here is that uh, Luspadacept is um, dose escalated according to the um, prescription uh, um, information and um, up to 1.75 milligram per kilogram um, every uh, three weeks. Uh, but from the medalist trial, we know that some patients were not those escalated or some patients even actually not, not a considerable low number responded uh, um, with the highest dose um, uh, and not with a, not with a lower dose. Um, so therefore, it may be prudent to start with the highest dose at the very beginning. And so maybe you do, you um, take advantage of the higher dose from the very beginning and you may not miss a response in uh, a substantial amount of patients. So 70 patients will be recruited. This is a European, a European study, as you can see here. 
um, and uh, also a subset 10 patients of uh, a lower risk, um, um, of course, ring sideroblastic patients uh, will be included who have been exposed to HMA uh, or Revlimid because these patients were not part of the Medalist trial. And so this is just to show that the agent may also work in this subset of patients. Yeah, this is the, um, um, the way it is uh, considered. So it's basically a little bit like medalist, but not randomized. So response assessment after, 20, uh, after 24 weeks. And the starting doses from the beginning, 1.75 milligram per kilogram, given um, every uh, three weeks subcutaneously. Then we have the Lennon trial. Uh, this is a study which uh, is about to explore luspatacept in ESA naive lower risk patients. So the idea, I mean, we have the COMMANDS trial by uh, the BMS cell gene, uh, um, um, which actually explores head-to-head -head comparison of ESA versus luspatacept in transfusion dependent patients with ring sideroblast or non-ring sideroblastic patients. So here the idea is, it's a complex study with different cohorts, but just to uh, just to show, these are non-transfusion dependent patients, and um, there are several cohorts according to the likelihood to respond to ring sideroblastic positive with EPO less or above 200, and the same also for ring sideroblastic negative patients. Um, it's a large trial uh, um, and uh, 30 sites, but uh, we hope to recruit uh, patients here as well. And uh, this is all about low risk. And now I um, comment on the IMPRESS trial, which hopefully will impress us with the study results in a couple of years. The idea is to explore imetastat in patients with high-risk MDS or AML failing HMA-based therapy. We know imetastat works pretty well in low-risk patients. The phase three has uh, been uh, fully recruited um, in this trial. Also, a disease-modifying activity has been documented with a significant decline, sometimes clearance of mutations, including SFTB1 uh, mutations. So suggested that this agent, and there are also preclinical data suggested in a PDX model, has a very high activity also in uh, maybe advanced disease in AML. It has never been explored there as a, as a single agent. So this is a uh, a trial with imetastat, same dose like in lower risk patients, 7.5 milligram given every four weeks in an outpatient setting in, um, um, in the second line treatment of high risk MDS or AML, elderly patients failing uh, HMA treatment. So it's basically like SAMBA or like Bergamo trial, 45 patients in 10 sites, Germany, France, and here we go, Australia. So <laughs> we go, <laughs> you know, because Australia had a travel ban, we thought we bring Emetastat to Australia. No, uh, to, to, this was a joke, of course. The, the reason is that Stephen Lane actually in Australia pioneered uh, also Emetastat and uh, in a in a preclinical way, and uh, there was also the idea to to do this trial together, also on a translational perspective. And we actually are about to do that, and um, that's I think a, quite a nice thing uh, and uh, in, interesting endeavor. With that, thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Um, I will definitely look at the chat now. So. I don't see questions at least not to my presentation. Uh, are there any questions? No. Okay. Well, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm happy to answer questions, but if there are no questions, then of course there are no questions. So Maria, do you want to continue with the span? I, I think is I think it's, I, I'm not sure if it's Valeria or me, but I don't oh, have- oh, oh, sorry, 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 Valeria, Valeria. No, I'm sorry. I can go, I can go last. Sorry. Doesn't I'm really sorry. matter, Maria, you're- I'm sorry. Was, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Unfortunately for the Spanish team, we don't have uh, currently any, any clinical trial ongoing uh, in those, uh, sponsored by GSMD. As all you know, we have the Sinsarev clinical trial and during the last year, we have been working very hard with uh, 
Takeda and Novartis to for a new proposal with uh, the triplet combination with Alpha, Pevonedistat, and anti team 3 Sabatolimab. But uh, in the last uh, month, as all you know, the negative results of this uh, the phase three trial uh, stop uh, our proposal. In, in, in the, it was a, a phase one and two proposal, as, as previously commented uh, Lionel. And we thought it was a very promising strategy. But nevertheless, we have to wait until the final decision of the companies. It's too hard for us to 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 conduct this type of clinical trials uh, sponsored by us because we don't have finally the approval of the companies and we need the drugs and the money. And, and, and this is our, all our reports uh, after one or two years. Uh, it's disappointing to, to see this uh, resolution, but we have to wait and, and think about a new proposals of new files uh, to focus uh, for other clinical trials. We don't have any other other comment on it. We are not as lucky as uh, French or German groups, but uh, we will we will uh, continue working on it. I think this is this also shows that uh, it's it's important that we work together and also um, involve each other uh, very early uh, because I think the 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 lower risk especially lower risk uh, subgroups of patients will get smaller and uh, with the exception maybe of countries and also organization like france uh, um, i think um, we will not be able to recruit um, this huge amount of patients needed for some trials uh, in, a, in a decent time so i think uh, yeah, i think it's very important that we do that and i think we we, we do it but i just want to want to confirm it here again so, Maya, thank you very much. Yes, um, we, we, we do that. Sorry, I, I just wanted to, to, to concur. We, we do that. Uh, uh, I think most of the trials that are uh, conducted in France usually are presented, even if, they, even if uh, uh, they are very small trials sometimes, but they are presented to the industry as a European trial. At the end, sometimes it ends that it's only a French trial or only a German trial. But I think that the discussion are, 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 are more... Um, are easily uh, with a company where you are discussing at the European level. Yes, in our experience, when you propose a, a trial for in the European setting, they also uh, give your the financial money only for your country, and each country should uh, go approve, go for the finance financial part, and, and it's not it's very complicated for us. Yeah. I, I'm not sure it works that way, Maria. Uh, when we are discussing together with Pierre, Uwe, myself, or Valeria, a uh, clinical trial at the European level, we are discussing the overall budget for all the countries. And then one of the group is getting the money and will divide the money between the different groups. So uh, each country has not to uh, find a, a, a funding by himself, but the, 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 the budget is discussed globally right from the beginning, even if the cost yes. might be quite different from one country to another. This is a big yes. issue, but... Uh, and the, the, this European uh, uh, group is very important because not only the money is of importance, but the time of recruitment is also very important because time yeah. is money. So um, when we are working at the European level, we might uh, have a more rapid inclusion of the patient that uh, if we do it uh, in at the, the, the country level. So, uh, yeah, but not only that, uh, Lionel, we have more impact on a pharmaceutical company to get the drugs. If we are all together, it's, it's quite different. Sure, sure. So uh, Guillermo just made a, I think, important comment. Uh, it would be wonderful if all clinical trials could be available at one website. Um, also for patients, maybe could be interesting. I mean, uh, we, we, I mean, we have this EMSCO website. We could at least put a link to each uh, study group website so that um, you can search for a clinical trial. I mean, at, at the end of the day, would be great in maybe in a couple of years to have a kind of searching tool where you put in low risk MDS, platelet less than 20, ASXL1 mut mutation, clinical trial, yes or no. 
uh, this, I mean, this. The answer is no. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm. <laughs> the answer is no, but this is an important answer. For the moment. <laughs> For the moment, uh, but I think uh, we should work on such a tool to make. I think at the moment we could make it very, very easy, very simple. Um, um, but I think uh, for the future, the diversity will will increase. So this could be an interesting tool. I do agree. I thought David had a, a question. He disappeared. I don't well, see him any longer. Well, oh, here you are. You will ah, have more than oh. a comment than a question in in. Following the, the discussion of Lionel and Maria, I, I think that in Spain for, for us and supporting Maria, we, we, we need perhaps, or we are willing to be involved in the clinical trial that probably if we are not since the very beginning, is very difficult in Spain because we have, as you know, some uh, difficulties because of the bureaucracy. But of course, uh, we are recruiting uh, patients quite well in different trials, and perhaps we can help in, in some of the trials that you are uh, showing in, in your presentations. And of course, we are more than happy to, to collaborate. Uh, actually, the Luz Plus trial would be a trial, you know, with the Luz Pata set, which is actually provided for free. I learned I was I, my first my, my first plane. <laughs> Uh, uh, right uh, for a presentation was to actually to Spain a couple of weeks ago, and I, I was sitting with very very nice uh, uh, Spanish colleagues uh, uh, together, and they told me that uh, Luz Patacet is basically rarely reimbursed in uh, in, in in Spain. Uh, it's, it has to go through a committee. That's what I learned in some hospitals. So I think we should really consider to have Spain in this study if you are interested, David. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. So, um, yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> Valer, uh, now it's your turn. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's that, okay. I, that I missed. That I missed uh, this. In the, in the no past. problem at all. It's nice to be here, and it's nice to present the few things that we are going to do now in Italy. Uh, very few, as I must say, because um, wait a minute. I'm trying to. Um, do you see my screen? But I cannot uh, get it uh, full screen. For some reason, I don't see. OK, now I do. Sorry. OK. Um, we are in a bit of low tide in, uh, in Italy in this period, meaning that, unfortunately, we do not have many studies. And I, I am asking myself why uh, we do not have um, enrollment uh, we have very few uh, really participating centers. And I am afraid this is because we are overwhelmed by sponsored trials and, um, and the physicians are, are, well, charged by any, uh, any kind of task and they think it's easier to have it and they, it is easier to have non-sponsored trials. So I'm, I'm quite disappointed in this moment because we had to close the iron study, very similar study of what uh, um, Sophie Park uh, is doing. Uh, it was led by uh, um, Emanuele Angelucci, and the idea was to evaluate the response to uh, early treatment with low, lower dose of the Ferazirox. So uh, the background was very similar to that of um, Sophie Park, but then we were also evaluating the um, iron, uh, um, the iron overload, and the uh, iron metabolism. Unfortunately, we did not recruit patients. So after a while, we we thought was not really uh, possible to go on, and we closed that study. So you see the num the names of the people involved in the physium. The physium is 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 practically interesting entire country. Uh, we have a registry, and in the registry, we have nearly 7,000 cases of MDS. It's um, a voluntary registry, so we do not um, register all the cases of MDS we see, but it's voluntary, so the ones that we, um, in the moment, may uh, include. And again, this is another big problem to go on with follow-up and uh, complete inclusion of therapies. So that's also 
It has been very useful for several studies and especially retrospective studies, but also to recruit in uh, prospective studies. But we are a little bit, again, in a low tide because we need to have an infrastructure to help uh, to complete and, and carry on the studies. You see that there are some regions uh, that do not uh, yet uh, belong to the FISIM, but uh, uh, some of them have applied to, to be with us. So having said so, the uh, closing the iron, we opened uh, recently a new study that is led by Matteo della Porta and is uh, mainly a study that is uh, aimed to uh, improve the uh, personalized medicine program in the treatment of MDS. And uh, this trial is based on the um, uh, evaluation by NGS and longitudinal MDS of a uh, big sample size, more than uh, 890 patients are planned. And uh, we uh, already have uh, 250 patients enrolled and 27 center agreed to participate. This should be um, in perspective, uh, a study that is uh, um, uh, integrating the, the um, uh, somatic uh, mutation evaluation and uh, of course the prognostication and the therapy. So to include this data in the therapeutic guidelines that we are going to renew um, in, in the near future. And, and as well, because we will follow patients, uh, we will also see whether we can uh, identify some predictor of response to several treatments that we want to uh, analyze. Finally, in this project, we also included, and this comes back to the fact that we should include patient um, advocacy, uh, we included patient reported outcome and quality of life in the real world setting. So it's, uh, it's going to be a huge uh, study. Uh, we have had some support from pharmaceutical company. We are pushing to, um, uh, to have as many patients uh, as quickly as possible to see whether this is, uh, all these uh, endpoints are uh, feasible and, uh, and we will succeed in getting them. And then this is another study that is uh, uh, led by Elena Crisa. And this is uh, uh, something we discussed several times to, during our uh, EMSCO meeting. We would like to know how many patients uh, in real life uh, are undergoing allogeneic stem cell transplant. So we uh, uh, extrapolated the data uh, from the registry and we, uh, we are aiming to have a perspective uh, evaluation. This is uh, a study that involved also um, uh, in, uh, in, in some way, we will involve more colleagues from uh, Europe to have more, uh, as many data as possible. Uh, Elena has begun with the Italian evaluation. So this, um, it, in this study, we want to evaluate the, the actual proportion of MDS that are uh, undergoing hematopoietic stem cell transplant. What is the impact of transplant on outcome and uh, why not so many patients are included. So this is the algorithm and we include patients uh, in between 18 and 70. Uh, of course, uh, you see this where the patients included from 94 to 2019, confirmed diagnosis was 1,277, but only 419 were in between 18 and 70. Uh, 136 of them were already high risk and 37 were secondary therapy related MDS. Now, the majority of patients were low risk and uh, some of them in the end became for progression or for other reason, eligible for transplant. So the idea is uh, that we do not have uh, many patients that are really undergoing transplant in real life. There are 5% of the population uh, uh, Elena could, uh, could evaluate. 32% were eligible, 5% really underwent uh, transplant. The survival after transplant was 45 months. 
and it was not really affected by pre-transplant treatment. Now, why uh, some patients did not undergo transplant? Because some of the patients had a, too much to wait to get uh, trans to be transplanted, and some of them were already progressive. Uh, some patients were um, failing the preparation to transplant, the preparative and pre-transplant therapy. And uh, only a little proportion of these patients uh, could be rescued and undergo transplant. So Elena is uh, still analyzing the data and including more data, but I think that this is very important also to plan studies in this setting. So if we want to plan more studies with transplant eligible patients, we have to take into account that only very few will be uh, actually uh, reaching the transplant goal. And um, I am sure Elena can say something more about it, but uh, the, the, the Dusseldorf patients are uh, going to be, um, to be added to this study and uh, some other patients from uh, smaller and uh, uh, our center will be included. And I think I'm done with it. Not much, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are really slowing down. I hope it's just a tide, as I mentioned, but uh, it's really difficult to, um, well, we changed the data, uh, the, the, the secretary is still the same, but we change uh, now, uh, this week, the, uh, the study, uh, the, how do you say, the clinical study organization. So we have a little bit of uh, problems, but we had huge delays and problems to have some study accepted like the the idiom study was a long story and not yet completed. So I, I'm a little bit worried uh, if we do not find a way to speed up uh, the, uh, the studies and mostly um, to include patient, uh, to include patient to enroll. So to stimulate center, not to uh, rely only on, uh, on sponsored trial. This is a main problem, I'm afraid. Well, yeah, thank you very much um, for these insights. But um, my understanding is then that the European regulation, which is about to come with one referring state, also ethics committee, have to, re have to report uh, in a certain timeline uh, to the initial report. I think this sh should maybe improve the situation in Italy, isn't it? Or am I, am I wrong? I mean, it, I mean, bureaucracy has always been an issue in Italy, as in Germany and in other countries, but I think you may benefit, isn't it, from this? You're, you are muted, 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 muted. Yeah. <laughs> the classic, I'm muted. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. yes. I yes. do think that this is really something that we should uh, be uh, able to do with the help of the European authorities. Yes. But yeah. Still, yeah, not easy. It's a, long, it's a long way. It is a long way. No, no, I do agree. But I think what is important, and I s said this already uh, several times, I think important is the transparency, the way we, we report to each other, the way we present uh, things. Then uh, these kind of meetings are so important to exchange ideas and to um, uh, also to get a better understanding of the country specific situation also for clinical trials, which is really, I mean, we, Europe is about to harmonize uh, the procedures, but still I see a lot of differences um, still in, in the respective countries. So are there further questions in the chat? I don't see questions. So I basically, I mean, uh, Sylvie uh, agreed that we could co could continue uh, and do not have a break now. If everybody agree on that, then maybe Valea, you are the next chair and you take over. Is that okay or? Yeah, it's okay. Again, I need to uh, answer a phone call. So three minutes, <laughs> I will be back. 
You okay. Can so, okay. So then let's do it this way. Then let's have now uh, uh, the break. I mean, uh, you 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 do your two phone minutes. call. Two minutes. No, no, five. Let's say five okay. minutes. Five minutes bio break, and we meet uh, uh, at three twenty. So in five. Okay. Minutes. okay? Perfect. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you.